All right, we have a tie at G Day. So Georgia wraps up. You'll have to bear with me on the lighting. Georgia's going to wrap up a G Day with a very, um, you know, the defense really had a, a pretty good day today. I have to say, I thought that the defense hung in there. Carson Beck, three hundred didn't seem like it. He had three hundred yards passing with two touchdowns, twenty-five of forty-six. I think the biggest thing about today, you know, let's see the rushing yards. Yeah, not even. 110 yards rushing. It was tough out there. I thought ETN looked really good. There were some guys that popped. And so let me just maybe focus on those guys. Um, I think that uh, ETN popped. I think that uh, uh, Dominic Lovett looked really good. Kobe Young looked good. KJ Bolden looked good. Uh, it wasn't as obvious because of sort of some stuff, but Ellis Robinson, I think, looked good. Um, you know, this is a really good team. It's hard to, like, what, what's hard to, you know, what happens is it's, it's impossible to watch stuff like this. It's, it's sort of like going to the grocery store and then you're going to cook the meal later. Like, you've got all the stuff. It's in the packages. It doesn't look right yet. And that's, that's where Georgia's at right now with a lot of this is they've got a little bit of ways to go. Let me try to give myself some light here. Ah, God, that's not even working. Oh, well. Um, I, I mean, is this a team that is fully capable of winning the national championship? Um, and talking with Carson for um, the entire time he was there, you know, he's older. Um, he is obviously gifted. I, I just I think it's a good team. I just it, it's hard to tell a lot from these um, from spring games, but I mean, geez, I, I mean, I I didn't realize Carson threw it as many times as he did. Gunner almost fifty, uh, almost forty passes. So Gunner was right on top of uh, two hundred fifty yards passing. He's got sacked three times, which is kind of strange. And then you see the production from newcomers, whether they're transfer guys or not. You had Etn, Michael Jackson, Riddell. Sokovi White is definitely someone to watch. Um, I thought Anthony Edward, Evans, you know, Dylan Bell looked good at times. I mean, so there's there's guys out there. I mean, K.J. Bolden definitely is going to be a really good player for Georgia, period. I mean, Matt's right there. Am I – you want to – yeah, he's a very good player. Um, I think that C.J. Allen had a good day. Mikel Williams had a good day. I see uh, Dirty Dan Jackson on here. I didn't notice that he had had such a good day. Um but uh, – and, and, you know, Jake Pope had four ta- – if you had four tackles or better today, I said Ellis Robinson didn't have a – I mean, but he had three tackles too. And McLeod had, was credited for two sacks. Now, I don't know if I noticed that. So, Xavier McLeod is a transfer from South Carolina. So, it, it became a spring game for me really quick. <laughs> like, like um, you know, so spring games for, for me just inside baseball – I'm trying to get photographs of guys that have not done a lot yet, and they could do stuff. Well, that was a little bit what the the, the um, that was a little bit what um, the Orange Bowl was. So I got like all this Gunner Stockton stuff, and like you 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 do you already have stuff of of uh, uh, Roger Robinson who he, he had some moments today too. By the way, Etn four for twenty four. He had an eighteen yard run. Andrew Paul looked good at times. Uh, I guess he only had two carries. So the carries went Roger Robinson with 11, and then Bowers with five. Uh, well, Andrew Paul had four, two on both. Teams. So I get kind of confused during G-Day, too, with stuff. But I thought I thought these receivers, man, they definitely look like they could be pretty good. And it makes you think about the Alabama team in 20, you know, that like maybe this team isn't necessarily predicated on things that we've seen in the past from Georgia. I, mean, I don't know. Um, and, and I don't think – like I, I only saw snippets of Clemson last week. Um, there, but the reaction was pretty rough. And I think if you watched parts of this game, you were like, man, I don't know about this. I don't think there were a lot of those moments. I mean, I thought that Kirby explained post game that the um, – that the, uh, the delay of game, which I would have really, you know, that's a, that's a pretty bad mark on a fifth-year quarterback. He said a guy was hurt, and that really wasn't a delay. Carson said he didn't feel like one of the tipped balls was, you know, on him. Um, so, you know, this is an explosive team. There's a lot of really good players on this team. 
Um, you know, you saw a lot of scoring today in the red zone. They were six of seven. Um, I can't. One of them was a turnover. I feel like, and Kirby said that ball hit the ground. The red team dominated the uh, time of possession with forty. So forty minutes. That's that's a fair amount. So that's your that's essentially your number one offense. Um, but where where do we go from here? I mean, you know, uh, the. You know, to after the game, you know, Kirby was saying we're not going to get better watching the film of the spring game. You know, we got to get, um, you know, we got to get certain guys in particular weight class. You know, we got to get uh, so that they know what's coming. They also know on the fifteenth, it's not just you know tax day. It's also it's portal day. So there's going to be some movement um, to and probably from Georgia for sure because they're slightly over as I as I estimate it. Um, but th- this is common. This will become more and more common over time. Um, but I thought, you know, the turf, I think I never criticize the, 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 the turf is the way it is right now on purpose. So don't, don't I mean, don't think that they don't know what they're doing because they a hundred percent do. And, um, it's not in the shape that it will be in the fall, but there's, I don't know the reason I don't care to know. I'm just telling you. If you were like, oh, man, the field looks a little bit – yeah, it does look – but they're doing that on on pur- pur- purpose. And so I think that um, in the grand scheme of things, um, does this team have the capability to win the national championship or not? The answer is definitely yes. And there are, there are multiple teams, Ohio State, Texas, Alabama. Georgia plays two of those three people before it's November, you know, and then you've got, you know, obviously the dogs – um, where where will Michigan be in all of this? Uh, you know, is there someone we're not thinking about, Clemson or um, you know Oklahoma or someone in like that sort of what feels like a different tier of college football? I don't know. I don't know. We don't. There these teams. You know, Kirby was saying he could. He's you know if he was um, if he worried about stuff that he couldn't control, he wouldn't be alive for very long. Um, yeah, I mean, I get it. It's. Um, he, they have this in 2024. They have something that you, you sometimes you get this in life, and sometimes you earn it. And what they've got is an opportunity, and they've got an opportunity to put another flag up, to hang another banner. They should claim the ones they've won that they're not claiming, but that's another conversation for another day. And they they should they should they probably should win the national championship now. They probably should have won it this past year, but they didn't earn it. And Alabama beat them. Um, did that? They should have been in the playoff. But you know, you don't. Once you lose control, you lose control, and there's nothing you can do. And so, what I think Georgia is going to want to do this year is have control as long as possible. Um, and talking with Carson today too, you know, um, I think that. When you get older as a player, the part about being patient, you understand that part. Like, they can't win the national championship in May. Um, But you can do stuff that will take away your ability to win it in January if you aren't doing – you know, you have to build towards things. And if if you're not doing that, you're you're not going to have your chance to win. And uh, that's what this next, you know, I think Kirby says, see you in, in or Carson says, see you in however many, of my, we'll see you in Dallas, my friend. Kirby, we'll see you in Dallas and maybe in, in Destin, you know. Um, it's not, this is a, this is a 364 day a year job. I think maybe Christmas is the only day where, you know, and, and even that has changed, it seems. I, you know, I'd say the 4th of July too, probably is like kind of totally off limits. So, um, but beyond those two days and, and Christmas, you know, you know, Chris Kringle, he's not getting in the way of a playoff run. So, uh, there's, there's a lot that's changing and we're just, we're in the midst of it right now. Um, but this is a team that can do it and we're going to have to see we don't know what they'll look like when they get to Atlanta. They'll pro- right now they're a 12 and a half point favorite against Clemson. I, I, it would not surprise me if they were almost a 17 point favorite in that game. 
just because I mean they're they're noticeably better than than what we saw um, in the highlights from Clemson the other day. But you know they can lose of their first four games. They can lose three of them, and the Clemson game is one of those games. So what are they doing between now and when practice really starts? Um, what are they doing? Um, you know, along the way, Carson was talking about, are we going to work out on the weekends? What are we going to do when the coaches aren't around? What are we going to, you know, so there are a lot of questions. Like, are you willing to sacrifice your uh, ability to be comfortable with your ability? You know, are you willing to sacrifice that in order to get what you want at the end? Are you willing to invest your time, effort, energy, not knowing that it guarantees anything uh, it, or knowing that it doesn't guarantee anything. Like, are you willing to do that? Are you willing to do all of the things that go into it? I mean, we'll see. And my reaction to this game was it will be forgotten by Tuesday. And I think there were some guys that we've been talking about on dog posts. You should sign up for our newsletter. It's down below, but there were some guys that we've been talking about, Bolden, um, for, for sure Bolden, Robinson. Those two guys popped today. I thought C.J. Allen had a good day. Who were you going to say? Roger Robinson. Roger Robinson did have a good day. He was 11 of 27. Colby Young for sure. So so there's these are new players. I mean, Roger Robinson played in the, Sugar, in the uh, Orange Bowl. That was a really good performance for him at times in the Orange Bowl. See, man, I'm telling you, this turf crew, they totally know what they're doing. And, like, if you're – I just want to step back and just say this. I mean, these guys are really good. People, if you're – if you if you were here today and you're like, man, the hedges look bad. Yeah, they look bad right now on purpose, and they've trimmed them back. And I'm going to tell you, they will be full bore in September. Um, and if you saw some of the other, like, changes – I'm in a – no, I wouldn't say this is a construction zone, but there's Cat 5 up here. Cat – this is – this is cat five um, and maybe some fiber, um, but they're, they've moved the press box and it's not done yet. And the area where, you know, what will, what, I don't think this is McGill. This is probably higher than McGill. This area of the stadium where folks will be here. There's a lot of movement right now. It was not a very crowded day at Sanford. And, and to my reaction to that is, well, don't, you know, don't put it on master's weekend or, and the other thing, too, I, I want to say, too, I, whether it was on Masters Weekend or not, I, I think Georgia folks are past, hey, we got to show up at G-Day. That was pre-2021 thinking. Now they're saying, uh, uh, we'll be in Atlanta, and we'll be in Austin, and we'll be in uh, Tuscaloosa, and we'll be in Jacksonville, and Wherever the dogs play, we'll be there. But we're not sacrificing a Saturday, although it was really nice Saturday in Athens, man. It's nice out here. But they'll get the field right. They know what they're doing completely. But they're only going to play one game here before October, y'all. I mean, that's not a great situation at all for Georgia. Um, and so this cathedral of the sport. But – um, I do. I do think this is a team that's a very good team. Whether they're special or not, I, I don't. We don't know. They're going to have to prove that they've got real challenges along the way. And I think the fact that they're playing on the road is 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 is, is detrimental to winning that day. It makes it harder to win that day. But in the we're now on journeys in college football. We're no longer in a situation where one game ends you. It's a journey, and it's it's a build towards a, cres- a crescendo to the end of the season. And you have to be able to build and grow. That I, it seems like this schedule is set up for that. You know, with the Clemson, you know, then at Kentucky, then at Alabama, and you got to play the Gators in Jacksonville. You got to go to Austin. You got to go to Ole Miss. You may or may not play in the SEC championship game. If you're not ready for the playoffs by that stretch of thirteen or sixteen, you know, six, you know, six really tough games and thirteen total games. If you're not ready for the playoff, then I mean, no one's going to be more ready because of the circumstances than Georgia. Whether they'll take advantage of that or not, I mean, that's the part we'll have to see. All right. It was a tie. Apparently, everyone's kissing their sister. I hope she looks good.